he has forgotten more than I'll ever know about the headwear industry, and he's just, he works harder than anybody else up there. 80-year-old Ray Poltman makes hats and caps. He's been at it since the 1950s. Poltman and fellow workers at Leader Manufacturing are part of an endangered species here in St. Louis and across the United States. There were 13 union cap manufacturers in the city of St. Louis at one time. And now this is the last one, this is the only one left. Like other areas of manufacturing, foreign imports have cut deeply into the domestic headwear market. It's a far cry from a half century ago when St. Louis had a thriving garment district. At its peak, about 100 companies making women's clothing alone were concentrated along Washington Avenue between 8th and 20th Streets. The city was once a major center for the hat and cap trade as well. Factories were humming to keep pace with demand from western and southern states, Central and South America, and the West Indies. Ray Paltman learned everything there was to know about the business when he joined the company founded by his father and uncles, the Correct Cap Company. We sold wholesalers at that time, people that were called jobbers. And uh, a lot of them were other manufacturers all over the country who did their own jobbing that we made specialized things for, for them. And uh, I'd start out on a trip in Minnesota and work my way all the way across into New England and down through Pennsylvania and Ohio and southern Missouri and back home. So it sounds like you, you, yeah, so you must have been on the road when you did no, that. No, 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 I, uh, I was like a darn fool, I covered it in about three weeks' time. Three, that's all? Yeah, that's all. That's you did all. that pretty quick. Yeah, I worked a day and drove half the night. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the time I was in the factory doing, you know, the, whatever it was. In those days, uh, nobody was cutting with, with dyes like you see here in, in a, a, a beam cutter. It was all cut by machine. Uh, a lot of it was even hand cut. Postman even repaired sewing machines, as he did during our visit. Uh, you, you couldn't afford to keep a mechanic on the place. Uh, it was like uh, a Mark can here. So uh, whoever, whoever can picks up and does what they can. And when you get to a point where you give up, you call in a mechanic. I've got, uh, I've got machines that when I close my factory, we brought over here that had motors on them that are 55 years old because we put in all new motors when we moved, when I first came into business. And they're, they run better today than the new motors you can buy. And there again, unfortunately, the new motors are coming out of China. When I took over the business, uh, my father passed away now at 16 years ago, and, it's, uh, and he and I ran it together for, uh, for a good many years. But uh, when he passed away, I just, it was, it was a short transition. Paltman knows well how the whims of fashion over the 20th century affected his industry. At one time, every man wore a hat or a cap. Uh, as that went out, the, the business slowed down. Many, many, for many years, business was pretty slow. Uh, the business is strong now because of the what we call the advertising business, the, the names and the logos and the different designs that, that Carpet America buys for either promotions or giveaways or, or, or for whatever reason. And uh, that all basically came about with the, uh, the one size fits all cap that, uh, whereas years ago caps were all sized. You know, you had, a, you had to make a range of sizes and then uh, uh, stores would buy them and then they, somebody would always come in and have the wrong size. This is one of four buildings downtown where Pultman's family once ran their cap business. How times have changed. 1232 Washington Boulevard is now commercial and residential lofts. In the fall of 2003, Pultman sold Correct Cap to Leader Manufacturing and went to work for owner Mark Tenzer. This is where we're sewing what we call the cover together on a baseball cap. Like Ray Paltzman, Mark Tenzer grew up in a family business, one founded by Tenzer's grandfather, then passed down to his father. Before he bought out Paltzman, Tenzer considered him friendly competition. We made the same thing. 
Um, but if I ever needed help with anything, if I had a, a, a material that I needed, I knew I could call him and he'd help me out. You know, if he had it, he'd give it to me. Same thing, he would call me for material and if I had it, I would give it to him. He had a real small shop at the end before, before he came over here and he works very, very hard. And I said, Ray, why don't you come over here? You won't have to work as hard. If he didn't feel well and he couldn't go into work, Nobody opened up. He was it. If, if it were here, he knew, and I knew, that the place would still be open if he didn't feel well. And it, I think it, it, it was really a win-win situation. Tenzer employs about 50 people at his plant on Forest Park Boulevard. His major customers include Filson, a company that makes outerwear for hunting, fishing, and other outdoor activities. Leader also provides hats and caps for the U.S. Postal Service and for the Scouts, boys and girls. That has been discontinued. Um, I remember this. Yeah, and, and <laughs> Tenzer says his grandfather started out producing mattresses for the Army during World War II. That was followed by headwear for parochial schoolgirls. But while Leader has a long and varied past, competition from abroad has created an uncertain future. Do you see yourself being able to see this business through till your own retirement? Maybe. I, I, I would love to say yes, but I, you know, things are real, real tough right now. And I don't know that I'm going to be able to, to stay in business that long. But whether the company has 10 months or 10 years to go, Ray Pultman plans to be right there on the job. I've been fishing once, the fish didn't bite, so I quit that. <laughs> I, I played golf once and the ball didn't go in a hole, so I quit that. <laughs> So tip your hat to Ray Pulsman. They don't make them like that anymore.